Hello and welcome to the next tutorial, tutorial 11, in which we're going to look at the basics of animating objects and also the camera in Blender. The most important window for animation in Blender is the timeline, which you'll find at the bottom of the screen in the default layout. The second most important window is the dope sheet. So drag a new window down from the timeline and then turn it into a dope sheet from the pop-up menu. And this allows you to see the details associated with any keyframes that you create more closely than you can with the timeline. The default number of frames in an animation is 250, which is approximately 10 seconds of animation at 25 frames per second. You can change this by typing in the text field beside the word end. Type in 1000, for example. This would create an animation 40 seconds long at 25 frames per second. For this example that we're going to work on, we'll put the number of frames back to 250, 10 seconds. Keyframes in Blender can be used to store information about a number of things, including location, rotation, and scale of objects in 3D space. Blender uses the abbreviations lock, rot, and scale for each of these. Um, when you're creating, inserting, or deleting keyframes. You can add keyframes for each of these in isolation or all at the same time, or any combination of two or three. Keyframes work by adding a keyframe at the beginning point of your animation and another one at the end point. All you have to do is tell Blender where to start and where to end, and it works out the animation in between. This is known as tweening in other software like Adobe Flash. Go back to frame 1 and press the record button. It's the red circle near the right of the timeline. If you ever find yourself not being able to see the whole bar uh, on any of the windows, you can actually drag it across by pressing and holding down the roller button and dragging left or right. Press G on your keyboard to grab and then change the location of the cube. When you do this, you'll notice that a yellow line appears in the timeline on the frame that you're on. That means that Blender has made a keyframe at this point. In the dope sheet, the keyframe is represented by a small diamond. At the moment, this keyframe now contains information about the location of the cube. Press Command or Control Z to undo, and this time move your cursor into the 3D view panel and press I on the keyboard to open the insert keyframe menu. Choose lock rot scale from the list for location, rotation and scale and notice that a keyframe has now appeared in the timeline and the dope sheet again. Move the playhead to frame 25 and note the frame rate in the properties window. Make sure that it's set to 25 frames per second. Zoom in on the timeline and the dope sheet by using the roller wheel, scrolling it forwards or backwards to zoom in and out. Move the cube to the other side of the screen with the gizmo, and a new keyframe will be added in frame 25 with new lock rot scale information. Scroll between the keyframes to see the animation in action. Go back to frame 1 and press the play button in the timeline window to play through the animation. The dope sheet is also very useful for editing your keyframes after you've actually created them. So right click on the keyframe that you made in frame 25 to select it. Then press G to grab or move it to another point in the timeline. So the controls in your dope sheet are the same as for controlling your object. G will move your keyframes. Move it over to frame 50. This will actually double the time it takes to animate our cube because we've used twice as many frames. It takes twice as long for the animation to play. Let's create a simple animation with our cube rotating, moving, and also getting bigger and then smaller. So first, delete the keyframes that we created by moving the playhead onto the keyframe and then pressing Alt and I on the keyboard in the 3D viewing pane 
and then selecting delete keyframes. Alternatively, you can simply right click on the keyframe in the dope sheet and press delete or X. Next, we're going to insert a keyframe in frame one and then another one in frame 250 to make the cube start and end in the same place. So that's ideal if you're trying to create a looped animation. In other words, when it gets to the end, you find yourself back where you started again. Next, we're going to move the playhead to frame 125 and we're going to animate the rotation by pressing OR and then typing 180. This will rotate your cube by 180 degrees. Or, alternatively, you can simply manually rotate the cube using the gizmo in rotate mode. Next, animate the scale by pressing S and enlarging the cube. Finally, change the position of the cube. So now we have changed the rotation, the scale, and the location on frame 125 of the cube. Play the animation. The changes in frame 125 will play and then the cube will go back to the start again. Set up your camera by pressing 0 and then pressing Shift F to enter fly mode. Reposition the camera so that we can have a better view of our cube. Next we're going to actually animate the camera itself and in order to do that we have to select it. So press 7 to enter top view and then 5 for top ortho view and zoom out so that you can see everything. Select the camera by right clicking on it so that it turns yellow. Go back into camera fly mode by pressing 0 and then shift F and make sure that you are recording that the red circle is selected. Press I and then select Lock Rot to create a keyframe for the camera in frame 1, which will record the location and rotation of the camera. Go to frame 250 and do the same. Insert a keyframe with Lock Rot. We also want the camera to end up back where it started so that our animation will loop uh, flawlessly. Go to frame 125 and move the camera to a different position in fly mode. Now press play and see what the animation will look like through the camera lens. Next we're going to render the movie. In the render panel change the temp folder to a folder on your computer or your desktop. Then we're going to go through the process again. Increase the resolution to 100% so that our video or our animation will export at full HD quality. Make sure the frame rate is set to 25 frames per second. It should be because we changed it earlier on in this tutorial. And then change PNG at the bottom to QuickTime or MPEG if you don't have QuickTime installed. Change the encoding preset to H.264, which is the codec that we're using to encode our video. Finally, click Animation under the Render heading and make sure that nobody touches your computer for a while. It's going to take some time to render 250 frames of animation. Although, not that long, it's only 10 seconds. When your animation finishes rendering, you can then import it into Premiere or any video editing program, iMovie, and add music or sound effects, text, titles, and so on before uploading it to YouTube. So this has been a very short introduction to the basic fundamentals of animation in Blender.